All right, so this is a video that's gonna cover how Amanda and I made Anywhere. And it all started with a demo she sent me, and here is a clip of that. So yeah, I mean, you can, Anywhere ended up being a pretty different song from that, but yeah, like there's a lot, like it was clearly built from that. Like there's a lot of similarities. That's where it started. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, once I got that, um, I wanted to keep that, like that synth rhythm and like the chill sort of like the chill plucks, not like something overwhelming. So, I don't know. I spent a while. I actually ended up using Lush. I can't really go into it just because this track's frozen. But uh, here is the main... I mean, this is kind of the first sound I came up with once I started working with the stems. And I also changed the chord progression. So this is that little progression here. Yeah, it's a little more uplifting. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's a good word for it. Yeah, no, definitely. And, I mean, I, I guess I'll get into the, like, layering later. But uh, once I got that, um, I don't know, what what did we do? I can't remember how early I sent you something back. Yeah, I can't remember either. I mean, we were going back and forth for, like, I would say anywhere between like four and six months, maybe. Yeah, just it was sending a while. different stems back and forth. Yeah, um, I think, I think I sent you something pretty bare bones. So it. It was like bare bones first verse and chorus kind of thing. Yeah, I think it was, kind of just like this first half here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Even that vocal wasn't there. Yeah. And so we had that. And I don't know. We both liked it quite a bit, but it, I don't know. It didn't, it still it felt kind of, yeah. sorry, go ahead. It was ahead. missing some, ele it was just like missing elements. <clears throat> yeah. It, it felt a, a little bare. Um, but that was actually kind of where we ran into a roadblock because we didn't want it to be, um, I don't know, have, like, be too overwhelming, like, melodically. Like, we wanted it to be pretty simple. Yeah. But it's it just... It's like finding a real balance. Yeah, it's hard to make simple things not sound, um, like, overly simple. And, like, I don't know, to give you that feeling, like, there should actually be st other stuff going on. So, yeah. what ended up solving a lot of it, um, before we've before we got that melody for the second half was uh, these little vocal samples. Uh, where are you? I think it's these. And that, I mean, just that alone. So like, this is without it. with it yeah so i mean I just that what's missing just that little thing kind of gives it a little bit more interest and sort of fills out the gaps and i can't i honestly don't remember where those are even from it's from some it's just a clip from some sample pack that i obviously did a lot of processing to uh change the pitch and I do this a lot. I mean, I covered this in the vocal chop video I made, but like I'll yeah, a little do, um, I'll adjust the pitch and the format independently just to kind of give it a little bit of a different sound. And then that is stereo imaging. So it makes it wider than some delay. 
shimmer for like a huge reverb, LFO tool for some sidechain, and then just some final EQing. Wow, what did I do? Just more low passing, or high passing, sorry. Um, and yeah, so that, so I mean, that's what we had at that point with those vocals, and it was cool, but we still needed like kind of a hook. And so we restarted sending a bunch of things back and forth. Yeah, that's <clears throat> what kicked off a bunch of stuff. And Amanda sent this over. I guess I, we don't have to listen to this whole thing. Or I guess we can. Who knows? <laughs> that ending part. I think. Yeah, anyway, it's this whole clip of like sort of a big melodic phrase. And then. So, I don't know, that, once I heard that little riff there, that kind of stuck out as a pretty big winner. So, translated that over to my favorite, like, Tycho-y sounding synth. <laughs> probably gonna happen a few more times during yeah. this video but i can't help it because this is 152 tracks <laughs> uh but yeah i mean it's basically just that same thing i think the only thing we changed was this ending part yeah yeah and i guess for anyone curious this taiko -y sound i guess i can't open it right now either because it's frozen but it's basically just like uh, a sign like a sine wave or even a triangle or like a low pass square if you want and then just run through a bunch of distortion i mean yeah it's, when we were emailing back and forth the way we communicated about that was the taiko synth yeah <laughs> i mean that's what i have my channel strips labeled too. yeah um so where does that bring us we have the chorus with the melody the vocals Oh, and yeah, I mean, even even after that, we still wanted a little more filler. So you, that's when you sent over uh, the ad libs, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Where are they? Yeah, so just little things like this. And then once that second half kicks in with the hook. Um, just that, like. Yeah, just fillers. I mean, yeah, that's just doubling up on that hook. And also we used that for um, the ending as well. So we had the outro and we were like, is this missing something? We couldn't really tell. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. So we added ad libs and we were like okay it's full now it's good yeah well the the ad libs or the ad lib you did isn't it's different from the hook too yeah because yeah we had this i didn't want the second chorus to be the exact same as the first so the second chorus starts at the second half of the first it just gets right into it and instead of, I don't know, having it die out a bit more and like taking elements away, more just replaced the hook with uh, this. Oh, whoops. And yeah, I didn't really do any, I didn't do much to this. The only thing I did was um, take this part and just uh, loop it. Yeah. But yeah, that ended up working out perfectly. Yeah. Um, I don't know, a lot of else? like, the, it was like the transition, so like the post-chorus. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was mainly you. Yeah, the right here. Yeah, this magical like. Oh yeah. Post-chorus like, transition thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sent the over like, all of these. This little, like, yeah. 
<laughs> we'll go for it. We warned you. So yeah, it's there's like bell sounds and the stab sounds and yeah, that little pat or that stabbing thing is cool. And I think behind that it's just yeah, just like basic smooth saw chords. And oh, and we have that like false build. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was another thing that we wanted to do to like create some more variance in the track. So instead of just having like the pre-chorus here and then going straight into the chorus, it drops out. I mean, it's not an uncommon thing to do, but... It's kind of like a bridge. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Kind of thing. And... And yeah, I mean, it's nothing too special. It's just basically low-passing the chords and the melody from the chorus and sort of just building that up which is expected yeah. and then you sent over is here like the i think it was some bells yeah bells and like this um like side oh, stick yeah, pattern like the, yeah which actually helped a lot it's like without it not getting quite as big of like a crescendo feeling yeah yeah so yeah i mean that kind of covers like the structure of the song yeah um what else can we get into hmm um maybe the building of the chords in in the chorus oh yeah yeah so I always try not to be too intense about layering, but as you can see by the track count of this project, it <laughs> doesn't always work. So yeah, as I, I mean, I played this earlier and that's really the bulk of the sound. And what is this? I think yeah, so it's just like an octave higher. I think it's pretty close to that same synth. I just probably made some slight alterations. Yeah. So. Oh, it really and I think, fills it out. yeah. And a big thing, I think I have spring reverb on there, which is what's giving it that like twangy yeah. release there. I'm a big fan of using spring reverbs. Uh, and then there's two more. I know one of them is distorted. I might have dialed that back, actually. Yeah, that one's pretty soft. I don't even know if you can hear it. Barely. If you're looking for it, you can hear it. Yeah. And then this. So this is just like a, like a transient layer uh, to kind of give the chords a bit more of an attack. Oh, yeah. and I guess it's quieter there because I do have it fade in so it's just that really bright like snappy sound and I think yeah. that's from I don't know some type of mallet instrument in this plugin called chromophone and one thing um, I do whenever I have like a transient layer like that is I'll either mute or like really turn down uh, the notes that are on the downbeats so they don't interfere with uh, the sound of the kick too much. So let's see. Yeah, that's a good call. So yeah, I mean, this is all of the chords playing and you'll see I took down or I took out each each one on the downbeat. So like, I wonder if I can play the kick with it for an example. Yeah, so like on, I didn't for this. So this is without, but with it, you get that really high click on it. And considering I already had a separate like transient layer for the kick, plus I didn't, I don't know, this didn't need like a really, 
I don't know, bright kick that kind of like fought, like, I don't know, battled through the whole mix and was really prominent. Yeah. So that's, that's the reasoning behind that. Um, what else is going on here? There are some soft chords going in since those are just plucks and this kind of makes it a bit more cohesive. Um, I guess I made this myself. Yeah, it's nothing yeah, too it's crazy, crazy though. It's just, <laughs> what, two saws and whatever that is, the pull saw PWM. Um, I wonder, yeah, with the pan position set, so it's really wide. Yeah. Looks like <clears throat> looks like a lot of like I don't know, mid frequencies. Took off. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. Um There's a lot of EQ on this actually. Yeah. <laughs> Three different EQs. <laughs> EQ plugins. Oh. <laughs> that's yeah. uh, a little overkill and a Okay, yeah, and a little more low passing with that filter. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, bottom line is if it <laughs> if it sounds good, it's not. <laughs> that's all that yeah. matters. Sometimes yeah. you get there in interesting no, ways. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I actually really, I would open up an older project of this, but it would take like five minutes considering how big these all are. But I stressed about the drums <laughs> on this forever. Because um, for the first like five versions of this I sent you, I hated the drums. And this took absolutely ages. And this actually, the kick's clipping. Yeah. Because, yeah, if I take off, because this, this is my drum bus here. So let's see what's going to it. Yeah, so... Just the kick and the clap, actually. Yeah. And if I take all these off, the kick will probably really sink back down a bit. Yeah. So I kind of smashed, <laughs> like, smashed these <laughs> to hell. Um, but I guess this is a decent example that clipping isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, most of the time it is, don't get me wrong. But... I mean, in, in certain cases, I think, because this is kind of, I don't know, this isn't supposed to be like a hyper clean cashmere no, mix. Yeah. And I think it can sometimes kind of add to that, like, indie vibe, if that's the kind of music you're making. Yeah. Like, it just makes it a little bit more raw sounding. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it the, the drums in general sit really well in the mix. And I wish... It looks like I deleted the actual um, instrument track for the kick, so I bounced it in place, or else I'd go through that. But um, besides that, the clap. It's battery. Yeah, though I really, I really uh, veered away from using uh, the samples that are included in battery. Uh huh. Not because they're bad; like they're really great. I just I no, don't but know. with you splice, one, there's that's... so many options. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but this is, that's the main clap. And I actually never really do that, like, 808 housey clap. This is probably one of the first tracks I've done that with. Yeah. Is and there another does, clap that you use, like, on the tail? like on the Yeah, on the... so there there's a few more. So there's, that right. snap is in there as well. And that just gives it more of, like, a, a high, I don't know, you get... You can hear the release more of this than this. So, and then without this. Oh, yeah. So it just adds a little more spice to it. You can definitely hear the difference. But I, did act I do actually have another layer that's basically just serving as like a reverb. And that's just, that's it. 
LF is Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton, however you want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> the sample pack. <laughs> um, I think I have the same one. What is this? Oh, yeah. So this is kind of, I do this on a lot of tracks, like on. Oh, it's on the, it's on the fourth or the. Yeah. Yeah. So just to add like a little variance to like your drum, your like your beats and stuff. Like, and there's a tambourine that comes in too. And it's just, I don't know. I mean, it's nothing crazy audible, but like when you do little things like that, it really starts to add up. Yeah. And it just, it makes things a little less stale. I can't remember if I automated this or not. Yeah, so this tambourine even then gets louder for the second half of the chorus. And I... Oh, percussion's always an interesting story. Oh, yeah. I have this, this is actually, like, the first... This is probably one of the few things that stuck with uh, all the iterations, or, like... I kept in all of the iterations of this song. It's just this little conga groove. And I think you can hear it pretty well. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and it, it's pretty effective. So. So yeah, it just. All right, but yeah, I don't know. It just adds a little more sauce to the chorus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually, I think that's just like a standard loop from Logic or like GarageBand. Oh, nothing, sweet. Nothing crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was in like the first demo that you sent back, even. Yeah, I'm. I'm guessing it was probably louder too, because there wasn't much going on. Yeah. Um. Oh, there is. I think the guitar stuff's pretty important, actually. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. These are... <clears throat> these are your stems, I believe. Yeah. Are they? I, I don't even remember, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, these two are, and then this is too, but I just... I think I reversed it. It was one of your stems. So like, yeah, none of these are like super audible, but I oh, don't know, but they super fill out the space. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do in songs is just to find like it's like really airy. Yeah, like these like, cool like tonal, breathy, like atmospheric things you can put behind, and it I don't know, it always just kind of fills it out, and with stuff that like doesn't change. Uh, notes or anything it, it can create like cool ex cool suspensions and stuff or extensions with the chord progression because it'll add yeah. i mean if it's sitting on one note and that plays all, throughout each chord in the chord progression i mean it'll be a different part of that chord and it might sound weird on some but um i mean it can create cool like levels of tension too that ends up yeah. resolving and i think these are actually I think I recorded these. Yeah. And these are just like, they sound pretty <laughs> funny on their own. But this goes, this also goes back to my love for like spring reverb. I love that like surf guitar kind of vibe. Oh, yeah. And that's really all these do. <laughs> What's the guitar that plays um, right before... Oh, oh I know what you're talking is. about. Yeah. <laughs> it's this. Uh... Yeah. I don't remember where this is from. I didn't play this, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have any idea where this is from, though. I have... I've spent, like, so many... So much time going through... Oh, yeah. Know, just every service out there looking it's for... It's a wormhole. Yeah, yeah. specific... Like this specific kind of like surf rocky guitar stuff. Like, yeah, it's I use it in a lot of my songs. Yeah, 
It's like, uh -huh. it's so, it's like, it's so small, but it, it's so catchy where it is. Yeah. See, that's the, like, that's the thing. Just little stuff. Uh, I mean, cause so I'll play it without it so you can hear. So with it there, it just kind of signals that something more is coming. Like it really yeah. just kind of like build. I don't know. I don't want to say build. But... Yeah. Um. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I could go into vocal processing, but I feel like that could be its <laughs> own video, just because. <laughs> It's oh, really it intense. Could. Yeah. And I'm not even like a huge expert at it anyway. Um, but I mean, if. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. It's funny because we were going back and forth. We were like, is this like, is this being, has some sort of processing on it that's like, uh, like distorting some area or like. I know there's, there's so many like nuances that <laughs> it, happen. Yeah. And then you start doubting yourself with like changing like tuning stuff and melodyne and yeah like there was one yeah this what was it is this gonna show up Color all the skies. yeah that right there skies. remember <laughs> yeah i spent like i don't know i bet i spent like 40 minutes trying to get the timing on that oh, my and the first version i think you sent and like, I, I don't know, I alter the timing a bit in Melodyne, and I sent it, and she pointed out that it didn't sound right, and it didn't, like, but <laughs> because I was in, like, I had such tunnel vision with it, it sounded totally cool to me at that point, and then after she pointed it out, I think, I think you did send over a final vocal, but yeah. it was basically the exact same as what um, I used to change the first time, and it turns out I... I basically just like left it the same and it was perfect. I, yeah. So it, we, <laughs> he was like, oh, I was doubting myself, but I think it was fine. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so at least for me, I get really into my own head when I, Oh, vocals. I really do too. I'm so picky about my vocals too. I was like, can you replace this R in this one word? And I sent him like an R sound. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, when we, I don't know, we debated about, uh, well, oh yeah. This? Even though I'm struggling. Yeah, I think it was because there's there was one version where the uh, she sang slightly different notes. Yeah. And they both sounded good. Which I think but, is in the. Oh, I think you he, use it in the yeah. Yeah, that version is actually used for the transition in the chorus. Yeah. Even so yeah, that's this. Even though I'm so if you listen to that and then this there the notes are slightly different yeah oh where is it Even though I'm struggling. so originally the part that was over here used to be there and after I don't know <laughs> you I think you even sent me new vocals and I tried like a few different things and yeah. then eventually it was just like it, yeah it was a matter of like consistency because the first vocals which is which are the ones that are used in the chorus transition they were from like the first take i ever took yeah that was this entire song so that initial demo i played yeah. earlier um that's Same where there. that's where this vocal is from yeah but that's yeah that's another problem because i don't know and you have to like if you want to redo vocals at all you have to record it in the exact same environment yeah or else you basically just have to redo all of them yeah um i'm trying to think i know there's stuff i could get more in depth with i'm just not sure what would be the most interesting um i guess i do have quite a few bass layers here so the the like fundamental layer is this like organy maybe what oh yeah i forgot i did this
Oh no! So it looks like I so muted. It's following the. I muted the top layer of it though, so I think. Yeah, there it is. So I think that's just playing the fifth. And but the reason I have the main bass line separated to two tracks was because when the bass dropped down to this E, for some reason, oh, with this patch, it just. I don't know. It, it sounded a bit overwhelming. Was like, it like a harmonic or something? I don't know, but the low end itself really got kind of funky. So, okay. Yeah, as you can see. So this is the main bass line, and then for just this sitting on this E, I have uh, <laughs> two two compressors and another EQ on it compared to this just having some slight EQ. So that okay. was just trying to tame this a little bit, and then I. Do you have another layer playing the fifth, I believe? Yeah. And that just, that's basically just a transient layer. So all together. And then you add in everything else. <laughs> well, we heard a little <laughs> bit of it. So it follows the same pattern as the chorus. Yeah, I mean this, the chord progression doesn't change throughout the whole song. I just whoops, hit my mic stand. Though. Yeah. Um, but that's what's cool about the having this kind of like organ house bass type thing. Yeah. Is, I mean, it's really simple and still just sounds like a pure bass line, but it's a lot more interesting than just this sub. Plus, it's really rhythmic, too, which I think so oh, once yeah. this kick comes in, I mean, it, it gets a little groovy. I turn on all the lights for you. Um, I guess I do have a lot of atmospheric stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, these. Is that Did what you I sent you over? I think so. The chimes? Yeah. Go. Probably. Maybe? Um, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> it's stuff we both use. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier with having, like, a sustained sort of atmospheric mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, element. Yeah, for sure. Like, hanging over the chords and stuff. And I use these in... I'm, I'm pretty sure I have in, like, every song I've made in the last two years or so, even if yeah. it's super quiet. Because... I mean, if you listen to it on its own, it's just this really, I don't know, it's just this very small thing. But. It, like, adds this, like, um, like, subconscious layer of consistency throughout the whole song. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of, it's like a tonal way of adding, like, a really soft track of white noise or like vinyl or something to have playing yeah. throughout your song. Just no, to yeah, like it's true. Subtly sort of mesh things together. Yeah. Um, but I guess for a comparison, so here, here's the sense for the build with it. And then without it, I mean, with the piano and stuff playing, there's still that, like, sort of legato thing going on, and it doesn't feel empty, but... Yeah. I mean, yeah, just as we talked about, it's just a really cool sort of subtle thing. Yeah. Uh, besides that, like... I mean, <laughs> even though <laughs> this is a stupid amount of tracks, like, it's... This isn't really that complicated of a song by any means. It's no, just... Yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot of like little things to kind of keep things interesting and it's a lot of layering out. and fillers, yeah. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's really there's nothing too groundbreaking in this. <laughs> um, it's good I color guess, coding. 
Yeah. See, this is <laughs> the color coding comes when I get really frustrated oh, and yeah. I don't want to work on a song, but I still <laughs> I still feel like I should do something in the project. So, yeah, I go through and make everything look pretty. I um, I know I'm taking a track seriously when I color code it. I'm like, OK, true I have to organize all of this right now. I need to know where everything is. And That's a good point. I actually yeah. I do the exact same thing. I'm, I wonder if there's anything interesting to go over in the second verse. I, I'd run away from everything with you, even though I'm never... Oh, I the, guess one thing I can't talk about. The bass is kind of different. Yeah. There, yeah um, some, there's like a different uh, beat in there I ha- somewhere. I have this little um, low-pass percussion thing going on somewhere i think it's this yeah right yeah so just to i don't know differentiate the f- well no because i mean the first verse doesn't really have drums but it's like pushing the song along yeah yeah it's i mean because since at this point we're through the first chorus and we don't have to like do a soft build like the intro in the first verse it's just a way like, it's just adding little things to kind of, I don't know, at least keep some energy there, even though it's yeah. supposed to be a softer, like, more mellow part of the song. But you, I guess you just don't want all of the energy to die out. Pay from everything with you. Even but then again, I mean, just the kick alone does carry it pretty far. Yeah, for sure. Um, but no, I guess what I remembered I could talk about was, is like little vocal effects to like your top line, uh-huh. not just like random things. Cause I added quite a few things to fill it out a little more. Yeah. Like really reverbed out stuff using Valhalla shimmer mm-hmm. and also um, like just little clips of like a de- really delayed parts of certain words. So like I'll play this bear the dark I'd go anywhere for you even though I'm struggling to walk I'd go anywhere for you and then once I add these in which are the really reverb parts and then you'll hear yeah it's the word you um, and I have a delay on there and then it pans back and forth a bit too the dark The U delay is over here, but yeah, I guess in this technically, <laughs> go, go is what has delay and the boatloads of uh, reverb on it. Go, go, go. Oh wait, one of my favorite, um, go, go. like, vocal effects is when um, we do the. I'd go that like gets progressively higher and higher. Oh, I don't, I wasn't even really, you did that. It's not really an effect. I think I just, yeah, I think I just sang it. Yeah. (laughs) yeah, Like, yeah, I I didn't do anything to that. I was just, um, but yeah, I guess before you leave this, so just, I don't know. I mean, if this, if it works, like, I don't know, drowning certain words in reverb is a good way to fill out space without totally drowning out the entire top line Um, yeah oh yeah like it's like big reverb on certain words yeah 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 it's a simple but effective thing i think this is what you're talking about yeah yeah all i did was distort that a little bit and added some (laughs) panning to it yeah i think because like when i first sent it to you i was just like singing random things throughout the whole song yeah you sent me a where bunch you of placed it. yeah where you placed it was like it worked really well yeah but you get the credit for that because <laughs> <laughs> i didn't make it um yeah i guess 
I don't really know what else to cover. I guess if if you want to know more things, just like ask in the comments or something. I mean, yeah. I'm happy to answer. I mean, yeah, both of us are happy to answer anything else. I just, I don't know. If I if I try to go over every single detail, this will probably be like a three-hour video. And <laughs> neither of us want to do that because we've probably spent three total hours trying to get this whole setup to work. With you guys have no idea. <laughs> yeah, Yeah, like trying to get my computer audio to go to her and then record me and my computer audio and screen and and me it's way harder than you think (laughs) so yeah anyway i guess hopefully this was (laughs) at least uh a bit informative yeah and yeah definitely ask us any questions so cool uh thanks for watching thanks guys